Hi, uh, welcome to our first uh, web webinar. Uh, we're gonna uh, try to make uh, some fonts with Prototypo and we'll uh, go into the different uh, uh, tools you, you can use uh, with Prototypo, like the parameters, uh, the manual deletion, the individualization of glyphs, and uh, all the stuff that uh, allows you to make a, a proper font uh, with Prototypo. So we we'll start to to make a uh, with making a font uh, for a logo and focusing on uh, five five glyphs uh, and uh, making adjustment to make it look like a good display font and then uh, we'll uh, try to make uh, a font for text uh, we'll, we won't we won't make all the glyphs because it would take way too long but we'll make some of the uppercase and lowercase and uh, work on different variants, a thin one and a bold, and all the correction you can make to, to, to make your variant look good and do it fast. So yeah, uh, I'll start presenting myself. I'm uh, the CTO of Prototypo, I'm Francois Poisa, and I'm here with uh, Jan, with our marketing director, and he will uh, and there's the chat. So let's go into prototypo and uh, start working. So uh, this is the main view of prototypo uh, with the, the world view uh, where it's written magic. I've already created my font uh, by going into the collection and creating a new family with a prototypo Elsevier uh, uh, template. So we'll uh, begin by uh, making our font uh, a little different using a parameter. If you don't know uh, what the parameter does, you can always look at uh, the little help that, uh, that will help you understand what the, uh, the parameter does. So we'll start by making our x height a little bit bigger. And uh, if you have uh, the full full version of prototypo, you can you have the full range of the parameter. If you have the free version, you have only a, uh, a small part of the parameter. There are three main tabs. Uh, the functional one is about uh, the real basic shape of the, the, uh, the font. So the height, the width, uh, the height of ascenders and descenders, which you can see on the D, for example. Uh, you also have the style, which is about more about uh, the strokes of the different glyphs. So the thickness, you can change easily. And the aperture, which is about uh, the end of letters like C and uh, G and um, S, stuff like that. You can also uh, change the aperture just for the top, top end of the glyph or the bottom end and the curviness. And they define more the style of your font. This is why it's called the, the, tabs, uh, the style tab. You can also modify the serif really easily uh, by going to the serif uh, tab and change the width, height. There's a lot of parameters uh, for serif because they are really complicated, complicated shape. So uh, right now I want uh, to make my, my font a little bit beefy because for display font that will be used for titles and stuff like that or logo uh, it would be a, a little bit better I also want to, to reduce my uh, to remove my serif so you could do it do that by uh, by using the serif parameters but we'll go into the glyph view which is uh, the one at the bottom and uh, we'll use the second tools which is the component tools and from there, we will be able to remove all the serif we want. So just by clicking on the gray shape and choosing none, 
we don't have any any more serif on the letter. So in the glue view, there's a lot of stuff you can do because and it's a, a really complicated view. If you if you ever lose your your glyphs because uh, I don't know you moved it and you you don't find it anymore, you can double click and it will bring it to the center. You can also uh, click on the little gear on the bottom right and uh, click raise a view. Uh, you can choose different glyphs uh, using uh, the glyph list. You can choose A, M, whatever you want. And there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of glyphs in this in this font. You can filter you know, the different glyph by choosing the lower case. You will only have the lower case and uh, etc. So right now I'm gonna start working on the M. You can also change your glyph by just clicking on the on the glyph there and typing it with your keyboard like the, like I'm doing right now but you can see. So I'm gonna start working on my M. I want to add uh, a little bit of contrast to the font, but there's no parameters for that right now in this template. So I will use the third tool, which is the Madion ed Edition tool. I can move my, um, my view by pressing space and dragging it. And uh, I'm brought back to the tool right when I release the spacebar. So first I will add contrast to the um, to the, the small stroke by clicking on the the empty squares I can bring um, the different parameters that I can modify I can modify the angle of the stroke by uh, clicking on the small uh, green arc and when I change the arc it just change the starting angle of uh, of the stroke, I can always uh, undo my, my my change by going in edit and undo my change. Or you can also use a Control Z like in most software. If you do uh, something completely crappy with your point, you can also click on the uh, reset uh, point, which is uh, the round the green uh, circle with the arrow in it and it will remove all the modification you have done on uh, on this point so i'm going to to thin my my stroke right now to make it more contrasty and i do that also at the top and while i'm doing that i'm watching in the in the world view to to look for the the whole shape of uh, of my glyph and to see if uh, I like what I see. So I'm going to make it a bit bigger and same for the bottom. So yeah, if you have question, uh, Jan may be able to answer them, but we have yeah. some. Uh, Francois will answer it in the second part of yeah. the of the webinar. Maybe we'll do but some. I, I can help you also in the chat. Maybe we can do some question between the two the two parts, and we'll do one big uh, question, uh, one big question and answer at the end. So I'm gonna start by contrasting the the second the second small stroke and right there I'm still looking at the world view so right here it's not looking so good it's okay I can bring that up and it should be fine So this is okay for my M, I think. I'm gonna go to the A. I'm gonna remove the serifs like I did for the M. I'm gonna be go a bit faster because it's just the same thing. 
So. And we we'll need to change the angle of the other point. Right. And the crossbar. So, I guess I'm not really okay with the A. This is a bit too thin, so, right there. And to the next one, oh. you have to click before. So remove the serifs. Maybe I can leave this one because I just like it like that. So for the curvy curvy laders, uh, contrast is a bit more complicated because uh, if you add con contrast, you can really mess up. The, the curves of, of the ladder so we have to do some more modification uh, I just basically add it and then we we'll see what we can, we can do all right so as you can see I, I'm not really happy with what happened when I added the contrast and when there's no serifs on the G at the top so I'll bring my points a bit lower and then I, I change the, ang the angle of the outside uh, of, of the handles to make it more a bit more harmonious and I um, guess I'm I'm lucky because that looks great. <laughs> so I'm gonna also, I think, change a bit of the thickness of the. Oh, I don't think I can, but oh yeah. So yeah, uh, points are, uh, are linked together. So sometimes to change something, you need to change some other things. So right there are two points in the, in the bottom are are linked to this two points at the top so to change uh, the bottom I have to change the whole shape and uh, that's, wh that's what makes it uh, react properly when we change the parameters after so I'm gonna go and make it yeah so next layer this one will be really fast Just leave it like that. And we'll just remove this too and do the same thing we did on G. So yeah, you have to, to work kind of slow because when you do manual edition, uh, you don't want to do something that will completely screw up the shape of the fonts because if you do that, there's a lot of, uh, there's it, it won't work properly with uh, the, the different parameters and you'd be kind of screwed because once you, you've done your work, it's kind of hard to undo it without just using the undo function. So you kind of have to work slowly and make sure you don't do crazy stuff. Because otherwise, you'll be, you'll be screwed. So I'm 
nearly okay with what I've got right now. I'm gonna change the angle there. Make it more. Okay. So right now I'm, I'm happy with uh, the shape of uh, the font, but we could go and make some crazy parameter change right now because all the points are, are still parameterized and we can make some adjustment like make it a bit wider. Sure, we'll have to go back and make some manual additions change, but but it will be pretty fast. So right now I'm gonna go and make it all right. So I just had to to change one one angle and my font is good to go. We could change uh, the width, the thickness. I think I'm gonna go with pretty wide and A has some problem with it, but it's all right. I, I, I kinda don't want to change the width of the A right now, so I'm gonna go and change the distribution of the point and then I'm gonna change the width that will allow me to to change the width of the, the stroke but not the width of the uh, of the character and then I replace my point because it will help the, the, the glyph to react better to parameter change if I want to do some more but I think I'm happy with what I got I'm gonna go and uh, only display the, 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 world the world of view because I, I, I want to work now on the spacing so uh, the world view is the place where you work on spacing and you have on each glyph you can, uh, you can see the, the two uh, green bar and this is where you can change the spacing of your glyphs so I'm gonna make it I think a lot tighter and I think that will fit particularly oh maybe not that tight but yeah I think I'm happy with that. When you change uh, the, the height of the one view, the, the font is automatically changing in uh, size to make it fit proper and to let you the maximum of, of, uh, of uh, area covered by your font and then you can see it's really, really nice. So I think this is it for, for the logo, uh, if there is questions. Yes, Alexandre has a question, um, he asks us uh, how to zoom in when editing notes. Uh, you can zoom with the mouse wheel and uh, it works even if you don't uh, use the spacebar. Spacebar is just for dragging and dropping your view. And uh, he asks us also is there any keyboard shortcut to do it? Uh, for the zoom? Yes. No, there's no keyboard shortcut uh, on the glyph view. You you really have to use the wheel, but I think we could yeah. make some change about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we'll note it because that uh, because it uses um, a tablet. That's why it's yeah. It's kind of okay. Uh, we, we, we can talk later about that, we will talk about that on, on the in-app chat. Uh, flame, there's no grid snapping right now. Yeah, the question was, will there be a grid angle snapping tools? Uh, there's no snapping right now on a grid, but uh, there's two, two things when you move points. There is a contextual snapping, like you can see the uh, purple line, it's uh, snapping on other points, on uh, vertical and horizontal. You can also, when you click on, the, on a point, press shift and you will be able to, to modify only the 
horizontal axis or only the vertical axis it will snap to its previous position and just move on in one direction like uh, like the group <laughs> like the band um, no any question just ask and we'll answer after the the second demonstration yes so now we're gonna work on something a little bit more for text so we just create another font uh, using grotesque this time which is uh, our sans serif template so i'll just create my font and uh, add the text view with lorraine ipsum and I'll set up the world view. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna refresh. Uh, yeah. No, it's a machine. So we're gonna work on this letter at the top and um, we're gonna try to make uh, the regular first and then we'll make a thin version and a thin variant and then a bold variant so uh, I chose to work on a uh, really thin serif for this one but I kinda want to have serif on caps but uh, I want to have a uh, really small serif on uh, on the lower case so I'm gonna create a, a, a grief group by clicking on uh, the, the third button of the, the breadcrumb which is all glyphs and I'm going to create a group which we call no serif and I will add by just clicking uh, the letters that I want. So it's D, E, F, L, R, I think. And now I'm in, uh, in the individualization uh, mode, which, which is the yellow mode. So in this mode, you, you, you see you have uh, the same parameters, but uh, there's no, they are all in the center at a value of one because it's uh, it's uh, the general parameters that we have in the green uh, in the green mode which is like for self with 48.5 and it's multiplied by one for all the letters that I chose so if I change this value right now it's uh, the general parameter multiplied by 0.5 and you can see that on the A, the C, uh, all the lower case, now my serif are a lot smaller. So this is the uh, times mode for this parameter, but you can also use the absolute mode or offset. And right now it says at zero. And if I change this value, it will uh, add this value to the general parameter and that will be uh, the, the values that are used for the letter selected. So right now it's 48.5 minus 40.94 for all the lower case in my sentence. So I'll be going a bit bigger. And uh, I think I'll, I'll be okay with that. You can also see the letter selected uh, in the text view, there are the one in black and the one in grey are the letters that are not affected by your individualization. So right now if I copy my sentence, you can see that all the lowercase letters are uh, affected by my individualization group, group which is what I, what I wanted. So. 
uh, we go into general params and I will add a slight slant to to my uh, to my font. So for the A, uh, there's uh, different alternate for this letter, so you can change uh, the complete shape of the letter. And uh, I'll use uh, the single story one because uh, I I think in, in if you're a just even a, a that slanted uh, you it's I think it looks it looks better and uh, I uh, I'll do some work on the on on the shape uh, just reduce a bit the contrast and. I go to uh, other letters uh, just for stylistic uh, change and just close my C and my E. When I mean when I say close, I mean the there will be a smaller holes in uh, in them. And same thing for. So I think this is nearly all good. I don't really like uh, the crossbar on the A. I want to make it a bit bigger. So I will call this one crossbar. Save and change the height of the crossbar. Right there would be good. And I'll also reduce the thickness a bit because it's a bit fat for my test for irregular. So this is my my base variant, and uh, we produce uh, first the scene variant. So I'll go into the collection and duplicate my regular variant and give it the name scene. Then I click on it and open in prototype. So I use uh, the the name scene for the variant because uh, prototype uh, recognize some names, so they're all here. You can name your your variant scene or italic or light, and it will uh, change uh, the base parameter uh, with the uh, values that reflect the the variant name. So it's a bit too thin for me, so I'll bring it back up. And right now, uh, it's just uh, using parameters that we we made the variant, and uh, we see that there's uh, some some stuff that needs to be corrected. So right now, the G is really really uh, narrow. So I want to. So I'll, I'll try to find the point that displays all the other one. So it's one at the top, and I make it not a lot more, not a lot more wider, but just a, just a bit. And I'll change the angle because for thin variant, don't look so good. All right. So the F also, so lower case A, F, is a bit square because the, when you seen it, it reflects the skeleton and the skeleton was a bit square. So we'll make it a bit rounder. Uh, I could have used the shift key to make it better. Alright, um, I think I, I I make the F a little bit narrower, so I have to find the proper points to... Alright, 
So I um, think I'm nearly okay with it. Uh, uh, we could always need pick on stuff like say maybe a bit too much contrast on the A and the D. Less contrasty, but all in all, uh, I think we have a, a, a nice scene variant right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a bold variant. Yeah. So we have a question from Flame. Uh, you would like to be able to know whether parts have the same thickness without eyeing it. Is uh, that possible? Uh, it's not really possible in prototypo. I because, uh, but yeah, we could display it, but we don't display it right now. Uh, if you if you want us to display it, you can always uh, ask us in the in up chat and. We'll add it to the to the features that we consider for the next update. So, back to it. I'm gonna create my bold variant, and uh, so it's nearly ready without any any work. So I'm make it a bit blacker, and uh, I'll once again look for for correction I can make. So. On the A, we see that the counter shape, the, the hole in the middle, is not that that nice. So I'll just change my angle on the top and the bottom. And again, I'm, I'm looking at the world view and the text view to see a, uh, an overall view of my glyph. And uh, if I'm happy with it in these two view, I can say it's Looks, it will look okay uh, on text. Uh, what do I want to do next? Uh, I'm s I think uh, I'm gonna change the crossbar right, on on the black uh, A because it looks a bit better with the thickness. So I'm gonna lower it back. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and close even close my E even more. I'm gonna bring this back and a bit lower and change oh sorry this one. And same thing for the fee. Okay. So this is, I think we can go and check out the, the different variant. And I think we have something pretty consistent on, on, on the three variants. I think I'm pretty happy with it. So let me talk a bit about more, uh, a bit more about uh, the different views. So I'll just display. This is a text view. You can write write in it, just like you would uh, in uh, a text editor. Uh, you can insert um, pangrams like uh, an English one and a French one, and also the whole basic alphabet. So. This is the basic Latin alphabet. There are also diacritics in it. But, uh, 
Oops. Sorry, there are so die critics. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, you can also insert Lorraine Ipsum. You can change the size of the font using the plus and minus on the top right. Uh, the world view, which is the one with the the green bar at the bottom is used for a bit bigger visualization than the text view and you can also modify your spacing in it so this is what you do uh, in the view uh, you can check out the spacing in a more uh, general view in the text view it would be repercuted uh, in an instant. I don't think I have. Uh, but if I go on the L and change my font, you can see that right there, spacing is modified. And uh, on this two view, you can also switch on black and white and inverted view. Oh, this is features. Uh, imported from um, uh, font uh, software. Uh, sometimes you can better see uh, incoherent shape in uh, an inverted view, or uh, black and white. Uh, and the same thing in the text view. And uh, the glyph view is just like I said before, you can reset the glyph. Uh, th this button reset all the, the manual ed edition you did. Uh, you can also uh, reset parameter from the edit uh, edit um, menu. Reset all parameters will, will reset all the parameters on the font. And uh, the reset uh, all change will also get rid of all the ma manual editing that you did. So this is the, fo the font uh, in the in its virgin shape. Like if all my parameters are the starting parameters of the template, and there is no manual edition at all on this. So I think we we will come to a, a close. We have a question. So are there comparison tools between weights to help with consistency and between glyphs uh, like sort of onion skin uh, no but that, that's a nice idea again yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah we know we know there's, there's a lot of features that font software have and we don't have uh, right now uh, we are trying to 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 make some change and we're discussing a lot of stuff, like uh, we have some... Uh, uh, we want to be able to import uh, image of glyphs and use them as base uh, in the in the background of the glyph view, or stuff like that. For the, the sickness, we, I think we will make some, uh, some work on this, but um, uh, we want to make also a, a, curva a curvature comb and stuff like that to to be able to to uh, see um, uh, like inconsistency in glyphs. Um, I'm gonna change. But yeah, there's a lot of features that we like as a, a drawing software, but Prototypo is not really a, a drawing software. So. For I think for consistency of, of thickness, uh, usually, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, uh, the type designer we worked with, usually you, even if you you can see that your thickness is the same number, uh, it's not really the best idea to have always the same thickness because optically it won't work at some point. So the only judge of your font is. How does it read in uh, in uh, paper or uh, web browser and stuff like that? So 
I mean, we could, we couldn't, we probably have some kind of of, uh, of uh, sickness displayer or ruler or stuff like that, but uh, consistency in uh, in in sickness isn't uh, isn't um, isn't always what you want in a font. Like I think, uh, like for this C, you could take a, a ruler and see that there's a, a bit of contrast in between the vertical stroke and the horizontal stroke in the curve, but that's because usually horizontal stroke are they are perceived bigger than than they are. So this is why sometimes consistency thickness is not is not uh, the per the thing that you want. I'm gonna go yeah. So, any more question? Uh, can go back to that. Or even that. <laughs> no, this is not working. Okay, we still have a few minutes if you have questions. So there's uh, a lot of different export. Uh, there's an export which we will be we we call the uh, merged, which is the first one. So I'm gonna open FontForge and show you the different result. Uh, so we have, uh, in fact. Two real, real kind of exports: the source one and the merged one. And uh, you can also export font as, which uh, allows you to change the family and the variant name on the fly when you export it. And we have an export to Glyphor, which I guess I can show you if you want to to make some modification. Right there. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. So this is an export to to Glyphor Studio. So yeah, we have the export font, which will export uh, a merged font. Uh, we'll merge all the different components uh, into a single uh, a single contour. Uh, and the source one, which is an unmerged export, and that means that all the different components will be unmerged and you can modify them uh, after an font software. Uh, an, an export to Glyphor Studio, which is this software, uh, where you can modify your font uh, right on, on a web browser. And uh, expand font as, which uh, allows you to yeah, change the family and variant name. So I'll open the the different font to show you. Uh, so I think this is uh, an merged one. So. This is what uh, an un unmerged uh, contour looks like. So you can see that there are uh, different components on the glyph, and they are all different stroke. And uh, in the in the export source file, they are unmerged. So we, you you still have them. You can also see the the proto serifs that we add to the to the font. And if I open the merge front, which is this one, 
So in this one, you can see that it's all merged. Uh, we do some optimization also. So some uh, we use uh, a software to add hinting to the to your font when we merge it. So you can see the this is open type hinting. So it just uh, tells the computer that there are some areas that we would want to keep uh, constant and uh, the and the software under after just handles it uh, on, on its side it's not like uh, uh, true type hinting so that's that's what we do when we when you do, you use export font I hope I, I was clear on that I'm not sure but if you have a question on export yeah just ask uh, if you want you can reach us via the in-app chat yeah right there you can start new conversation and we use to to answer as quick as as we can There's no SVG export, but I mean, if you have a font, you can always vectorize it pretty easily because it's kind of just a vector, a vector drawing. So, uh, I mean, if you go to Illustrator and uh, type a text with your font, you'll be able to to vectorize it pretty easily, I think. But no, we, we don't do we we, we don't do um, SVG font, so I, I I don't think it's in the plan right, right now. We we want to take uh, a full advantage of um, the OT, OTF uh, format, and uh, we'd rather add feature uh, supported by OTF. I think right now that than going into SVG. Uh, because yeah, I think we would would rather like add ligature and and uh, oh, I think it's cutting. Mm. And yeah, so yeah, ligature and components and uh, as, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we are still here for a few minutes. If you if you have questions, uh, the recording of the webinar will be available on the YouTube channel just after the webinar. So so don't worry. You can watch it again and again <laughs> and again, and you can uh, spread the word. To your friends and uh, and uh, let them discover prototypo. For more info, you can go to the website www.prototypo.io. And uh, that's all. Yeah. Uh, thank you and yeah thank you uh, have a good day or night or evening wherever you are, wherever you and, are. Uh, and thank you very much thank you very much bye bye